This lecture discusses uh, the links between philanthropy and tax. Jackie Harrison from the Community Foundation for Ireland will discuss briefly uh, philanthropy and set the context for the lecture. And Mike Gaffney from KPMG will discuss the more detailed provisions in relation to tax and philanthropy. We will conclude by providing some additional sources of information. So by way of setting the context for this lecture, I'll briefly discuss philanthropy and why it is relevant to the role of the trusted advisor. I will also summarise the philanthropic giving options that are available for clients. So what is philanthropy? Philanthropy is a term which encompasses a broad spectrum of giving. The word philanthropy has its origins in the Greek term philanthropos, meaning for the love of philanthropy. But in a modern context, philanthropy can be seen to be the private giving of money, assets, expertise and time for public purposes. Sometimes this is referred to as giving time, talent and treasure. Looking then to philanthropy in Ireland, we know that Irish people are very generous and well over 80% of the population give to charity. However, the prevalent model of giving tends to be um, short-term, once-off donations, often in response to an emergency appeal or a fundraising event. Despite the economic recession, it's generally recognised that there is a potential to incre increase greater participation in and levels of donating on the part of the better off in society. And there's also a need to encourage more planned and committed forms of giving. Such giving is sometimes differentiated as philanthropic giving in contrast to more responsive and ad hoc charitable giving. It's illustrated by the old truism, you can give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day, but teaching a man to fish feeds him for a lifetime. There's only a small community of philanthropic trusts and foundations in Ireland, and two of the largest of these, the One Foundation and the Atlantic Philanthropies, will have ceased operating by 2016. Inspired by 1700 community foundations worldwide, the Community Foundation for Ireland was set up in 2000 and is a one-stop shop for donors engaged in strategic and purposeful giving. We ensure that our donors' charitable donations go to causes that they care most about and achieve real impact in communities throughout Ireland. The Community Foundation made grants on behalf of its donors of almost 3.5 million in 2013 and invested in communities throughout Ireland and overseas. So what then is the role of the trusted advisor in relation to philanthropy? In fact, professional advisors, including tax advisors, solicitors, accountants and other financial advisors, are in an ideal position to reach and advise existing and potential philanthropists. And offering philanthropy advice can be beneficial for both the advisor and the client. Good advice can help philanthropists to clarify their objectives and review their past giving. It can help to increase their knowledge of areas in need and build confidence in what they fund. For the advisor, offering philanthropic advice can deepen the relationship with clients, their families and enhance the firm's brand. While some, for some clients a conversation about philanthropy may come easily as part of a business and estate planning um, process, but with others, there may be an opportunity for the uh, professional advisor to init initiate discussions about philanthropy, often in tandem with discussions about vehicles for giving, wealth transfer and tax relief. Significant giving opportunities often arise when clients are making major business, personal and financial decisions in their lives. So who then can be a philanthropist? Attitudinal research undertaken by Behaviours and Attitudes in 2011 found that in Ireland the term philanthropist is associated with high levels of giving. There was a perception that somebody would have to give at least 130,000 to be a philanthropist and that philanthropists are other people rather than anyone somebody might know themselves. But in fact, by giving their time, treasure and talent, anyone can be a philanthropist. In the Community Foundation for Ireland's experience, your client may be thinking about taking a more strategic and structured approach to their charitable giving, prompted by a number of factors. And these can include, firstly, an opportunity has arisen. 
Perhaps a client has had a windfall gain through the sale of a uh, business or an inheritance and feels that they would like to give back a bit more. Or perhaps their children are on an independent path, fee fee freeing up some of their resources. The second factor that might prompt a client to think about um, engaging in philanthropy in a more structured way is frustration with their current giving. Maybe they feel that their current giving is a bit ad hoc without any overall strategy and that accordingly it's difficult to assess its impact or effectiveness. Or they may feel that they're approached by numerous good causes and fundraisers but that they'd like to adopt a more selective and strategic approach. Thirdly, and they may well be very concerned about governance and transparency. In particular, in the light of recent controversies in the charitable sector, clients will be increasingly seeking more assurances about the organisations they support and the outcome from their donations. And the final factor might be that they would like to engage their family in their giving. And we see internationally that clients will increasingly seek to engage their wider family in their philanthropy as a means to passing on a spirit of giving. For two donors to the Community Foundation, their motivations were quite different. For one, as you can see from the quote, this person became interested in philanthropy when they became frustrated in their, with their current giving. They felt that they weren't getting enough um, response or feedback from the charitable giving they were undertaking and wanted to get involved in a more structured way. And another donor, again, like the uh, Monaghan Fund, saw the value of making a longer term investment and providing a sustainable source of funding for charitable causes. In terms of engaging in philanthropy, there are a variety of ways that clients could decide to engage in philanthropy. And the four main ways, which I'm going to review briefly, are firstly, to give directly. Most people will have given directly to charities, either on a regular or on a once-off basis. This approach works well where a client may have a small number of transactions, where they may give to the same charity each year over an, or over an extended period, and also at a smaller scale of giving, um, it would not justify any administrative cost to get involved in any other way of giving. So giving directly works well. And certainly for giving under 10,000 euros, this is usually the most appropriate choice. The second option is to set up a charitable trust or foundation, which provides a formal structure for grant making and is often adopted by families or individuals where the philanthropy is significant in scale and long-term in objective. So setting up a foundation provides maximum flexibility in choosing the areas the family wishes to support and a flexibility in the approaches taken in the philanthropic investment. However, it also requires a commitment of time and resources. The majority of uh, philanthropic organisations in Ireland are established as a charitable trust or more frequently as a company limited by guarantee and not having a share capital. Startup costs will vary um, depending on the size of the foundation, but are typically between 10 and 50,000 euros. Given the level of administration and the ongoing time commitment involved in establishing and running a foundation, it may not be a viable option unless a significant donation is made. The third option is to set up a donor advised or a family fund. And donor advised funds are philanthropic funds managed by a third party on behalf of the donor and the donor prescribes how the monies are going to be dispersed. Community foundations are pioneers of donor advised funds which provide many of the benefits of a family uh, char or a charitable foundation including all the tax reliefs but donors are also able to access the community foundation's grant making experience, due diligence, monitoring and reporting processes. The philanthropic organisation takes care of the legal requirements and administration of the fund. This is an ideal vehicle for charitable donations in excess of 10,000 uh, euros. And the advantages of this approach are saving time and money, accessing the expertise of an existing philanthropic organisation, availing of the philanthropic organisation's charitable status in order to give tax efficiently and with immediate effect, protection of um, privacy and anonymity, which may be a priority for many donors, and accessing feedback in relation to philanthropic donations. 
finally to mention, there are also longer term um, giving options, which include leaving a legacy in a client's will, and also setting up a long term endowed fund, either as a charitable foundation or indeed as a donor advised fund. This part of the lecture reviewed philanthropy and provided a context for the main part of the lecture which will review the relevant provisions in relation to philanthropy and tax. Hi, I'm Mike Gaffney. I'm a director of the Community Foundation of Ireland uh, and as Jackie said, I'm here to explain the tax rules uh, that concern charitable giving and philanthropy. Uh, I'd, I'd start by saying that the, the detailed rules are very well explained in many cases, textbooks and for instance the Irish Revenue Commissioner's website. Uh, what I'm going to do is go through them, uh, explain the logic of them, the, the practical context of them uh, and in some cases the history of how they came about so they're easier to understand. Uh, and I'm going to start with, uh, with the basic thing of individuals giving donations to charities. Uh, and you'll see in the slide there's some numbers there, but before I, I get to that, I should just say a quick word about what is a charity uh, for tax purposes. It's not really defined in the tax law, but there's lots of old court cases which define what is charity and what isn't. Uh, and generally, charity is something which is for the good of the community. Uh, falls into a number of headings, like it could be educational, it could be religion, could be the relief of suffering, which would include hospitals, things like that. Um, it's most important that it's for the public or a section of the public. So for instance, if, uh, if a friend of mine uh, catches a rare disease and I raise money to help that friend, that isn't treated as, as a charity technically because it's just for one person. Uh, if, if I founded a charity for you know, anybody who's suffering from that disease or for those in Ireland who are suffering from it, and if it was a, a general section of the public or the public I was trying to help, then it would be a charity. Uh, it's obviously also very important that the charity has proper governance, that the money is going only to the purposes of the charity uh, and indeed to get the charity recognised for tax purposes. Uh, the revenue have a fairly strong governance requirements and one shouldn't assume that it can be done very, very quickly because they take seriously uh, the requirement that the charity is properly set up so that it's properly governed, governed to show that the money can't go anywhere this is not supposed to go. So uh, Revenue have a special branch for setting up charities. They're very helpful and there's very good information there, but uh, it does take time to set up one and get one recognised. So having got that out of the way, just get to, to get to the numbers. Uh, the system has changed since the beginning of 2013. Previously, uh, there was a system where if somebody gave a donation to a charity, they would get a tax deduction for it. And some people paid tax at higher rates and some people would pay tax at lower rates so their deductions were more or less valuable to them depending on which tax they paid. Uh, the system uh, has changed for two reasons I think. One was to simplify it and another was I think the natural desire of the government and revenue to, uh, to cut down the risk of losing tax so to probably to exercise more control over the system. So the way it works now for individuals and this is, it works for any individual, it doesn't matter whether it's a self-employed person or a PAYE person, is that if you want to give a thousand euros to charity, if you want the charity to get the thousand euros, uh, the tax deduction that is given is now given to the charity instead of to the individuals. Okay. So, uh, and it's given at a, at a rate of 31%. Now that's a fairly arbitrary rate which was just halfway between the top rate of income tax which is 41 uh, and the bottom rate of income tax which is 20. Uh, and I might add, by the way, that the, 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 the real rates of tax tend to be higher because of PRSI and levies and things, but as far as charitable donations are concerned, tax relief is only given uh, out of income tax, which is, is the element of your tax bill that goes up to 41%. Uh, so the system now is that a tax credit of 31% is given. And you'll see the way it works, that the 31% is based on the ultimate amount that the charity gets. So the simple example I've given there on the slide is what happens. If you want to give €1,000 to charity, you, you write a cheque to the charity or transfer them €690, Euros, so that when they get the credit, which is 31% of the total, it'll bring their total to £1,000. Okay? And you can use those numbers to calculate what credit the charity would get based on any cash payment that you give them. But it's probably better to decide what you want the charity to end up with, and you will know that effectively what you've got to do is write a cheque for 69% uh, of that, and the charity get, then gets the 31% back as a credit. Uh, the, the charity will only get that uh, credit back when the revenue computer system has verified that the taxpayer has actually paid the tax. 
So, for instance, if I give uh, an amount to a charity now, and let us say now is the month of April, it could be any month, and let's say I'm a self-employed person and I'm paying my tax in November or at the end of the year, the, the revenue computers will effectively wait until they've verified that I actually have paid the tax uh, before they give the credit to the charity. So there's a bit of a delay there, but it should work fairly seamlessly uh, because it's all computerised and doesn't depend on, on, on hard copy forms or, or human intervention. Um, there's a minimum amount of uh, €250 Euros, uh, before it's allowed as well. So I'm covering that on the next slide here. Uh, for those very high rollers, there's also a maximum amount of €1 million per annum that can uh, c qualify for the tax relief. Okay. There's another interesting uh, glitch that comes up quite regularly for people who, who, who found charities or who work in the whole area of philanthropy and, uh, and non-profit organisations that where somebody is associated with a charity, uh, then the, the donation that is tax allowable or that qualifies for the tax um, advantages cannot be more than 10% of the income of those individuals. And uh, interestingly enough, that was brought in a long time ago so that the revenue would be able to continue to collect PAYE from people like nuns and priests who effectively worked for a charity all the time but tended to hand all of their salary over to the charity. Uh, if you allowed that to be a, a tax deductible donation in those days, then the revenue wouldn't have collected any PAYE. So it was brought in for that purpose. Uh, it's still there uh, and it affects people who work for charities uh, and it affects people who are members of a charity. Now that's an interesting one because a member is like a shareholder which in the case of charity is often a very technical point because most charities are not for profit. All the money goes to charity, so nobody really owns them. But you do get people who often are nominal shareholders just uh, as part of the governance regime. Uh, interestingly enough, this restriction doesn't hit directors of charities uh, who are often people involved with charities, but they're not employed by them uh, and they're not members or, or technical shareholders. Uh, I go to the next slide now, uh, which covers what can be given to charity and sometimes people mistakenly assume uh, that you can give things more than cash uh, and you can but it's quite narrow so cash qualifies for this uh, tax incentive regime for individuals giving um, shares quoted on a stock exchange are treated as being almost as good as cash so you could imagine shares in any of the big quoted companies they can be given and it's, it's the same effect as giving cash uh, and then debentures, which is like loan notes or debt instruments as well. I'd have to say in practice, I have rarely seen items two and three there. It's almost always cash, and it's hard to think of a situation usually where somebody um, uh, would want to give shares where they couldn't simply sell the shares and give the cash. Uh, but uh, it could be uh, the case in some specialist situations. But do note that if you wanted to give the family silver or land or whatever, that doesn't qualify for the income tax credits uh, and that's a mistake people often make. There are other incentives we'll come to if people give other assets, but these, this income tax credit for the charity of the 31% uh, doesn't come up unless you give cash, quoted shares or quoted dementors. Uh, the next slide now is an interesting one, donations by companies. I think this could become quite important because um, uh, a lot of, particularly people who are business people or people who are wealthier often have a lot of their assets in companies for governance reasons or for limited liability or whatever uh, and that's often where the cash is and that's often therefore where the donations are made. Uh, for companies there's a different system for individuals, it's, it's a straight old-fashioned tax deduction. Now companies in Ireland tend to pay tax at 12.5% if it's a trade or business like you know supermarkets or pubs or manufacturing companies or whatever. Uh, you do get investment companies whose income is passive income, like investment income, and that sort of income attracts a tax rate of 25%. So companies pay tax 12.5% or 25%, and the, don the tax deduction for the donation is given to the company without limit, you know, i.e. there's no upper limit on the donation can be made, and if the company makes a donation, it gets tax deduction at the rate uh, appropriate depending on what the company is. So if it's a trading company and pays 12.5%, it makes a donation to charity of €100,000, it's going to be allowed a tax deduction in its tax return, which will reduce its tax bill by 12.5% of €100,000. Similarly, if it's an investment company and it has investment income that's taxed at 25%, and it makes a donation of €100,000, then it will reduce its taxable income by €100,000, which will reduce its tax bill by 25% of that. Uh, so that's the situation for companies. Um, I should go on to some other taxes, uh, and again, these are probably less common, but, but do crop up, especially where you have 
bigger amounts being given uh, or where you have somebody making once-off gifts um, in that there are people who maybe don't have that much income that they pay income tax on but they might actually have a lot of capital uh, and, and indeed they might have assets that have gone up in value and if they were to sell those assets they would pay capital gains tax. So for instance if somebody had shares or land and they were to sell that land they would generally pay capital gains tax which is 33 percent on whatever gain they'd made the difference in the cost and the sales price if they were then to give that money to charity they might get an income tax credit but only if they've paid income tax uh, and in some cases they mightn't be people who have much income and therefore the income tax credit isn't interesting for them so what the tax law does for those cases it says okay you can actually save capital gains tax if you just give the asset directly to the charity so if I'm somebody who has shares that have gone up in value or land or whatever asset could be collectibles, antiques, uh, anything that's gone up in value uh, and I want to give it to the charity, rather than selling it and paying the capital gains tax and then giving the cash to the charity, I could just simply give the asset to the charity and the tax law says you're treated as not having made any gain or loss on that asset, even if the asset is an awful lot more valuable than when you bought it. Uh, so that's the capital gains tax incentives that apply to donations of assets to charities. Uh, there are other exemptions and again some specialist ones but, but the first one is quite common. Gift tax uh, in Ireland is the same as inheritance tax so if anybody gives a gift or indeed if you die and leave something in your will that's an inheritance. Uh, there's a tax called CAT, Capital Acquisitions Tax, which applies to those. Generally the person getting the gift uh, pays 33% tax on, on the gift or inheritance they get uh, and suffice to say that where that person is a uh, a recognised charity, uh, they don't have to pay either gift tax or inheritance tax. So therefore, uh, as Jackie had mentioned, I think leaving something in, in, in your will to a charity is actually quite effective for the charity from a tax point of view. They don't have to pay tax net. And I'll just mention this as an aside, charities don't have to pay stamp duties either. So if you gave a building to a charity, for instance, normally a person who requires a building pays stamp duty, a, a charity wouldn't have to. Uh, that's the basic rules. I'd just now like to, to cover in detail something which Jackie talked a fair bit about uh, and I'll just mention the, the, the tax side of it as well, which is endowments. Uh, because you, you could give uh, a certain amount to charity and they spend it and it's gone and indeed that could do an awful lot of good uh, depending on what the charity is and how they use it. Uh, the other idea is to give the money to the charity or to a, a philanthropic association uh, or to an endowment fund which is recognised by the revenue as being a charity uh, and that fund doesn't actually spend the money but it invests the money and the investment income is what's used to keep the charity going and uh, while obviously the immediate infusion of money you know, for charitable purposes is less because the capital sum, the amount given, is not immediately spent on charity the whole thing tends to be much more sustainable and some very big endowment funds internationally like the you know, Harvard University or the Rockefeller Foundation and indeed a lot of the funds run by the Community Foundation of Ireland are very sustainable and if there's booms or busts in the economy these will survive because the capital is there and they're just spending the income from it. Uh, but just to say that from a tax point of view as long as there's a proper governance and as long as the money cannot go anywhere except for charity uh, these can be recognised uh, as charities for tax purposes uh, and you get the same uh, tax reliefs for making donations to them whether it's a company or an individual. Uh, as I've discussed before. Okay, and the last thing I want to discuss then is international aspects and this uh, can get a little bit complicated because until recently the Irish tax law said that all these incentives for charities were, uh, were just for Irish charities and actually for Irish people giving money to Irish charities. Now the world is obviously not that, um, is, is not that parochial Many Irish people give to causes abroad and many foreign people give money to, to uh, charities in Ireland. Um, because of European Union cases saying that countries could not impede the free movement of capital and impede money flowing across borders uh, for bona fide charitable donations, uh, the Irish law has changed and it's basically provided that any foreign charity in the European Union or the European Economic Area, which is very similar territory, any of those can get approved as if they're an Irish charity. Now, many of them might find that still very burdensome to do because, as I said, there's quite a detailed process to go through with the revenue to do that. Um, what often happens is that people in those foreign countries would give money to a charity which then might have within their objectives to give that money to 
uh, where they wanted to go in Ireland, for instance. Or similarly, if somebody in Ireland is interested in giving money to help um, poverty in a part of Africa, it wouldn't be that difficult to find some existing established charity which does that already and you could support it through that charity rather than having to, uh, to set up and establish one's own charity. Uh, I think that's an area which probably needs to develop a little bit more because, as I said, it's still quite cumbersome for uh, foreign charities to set up in Ireland where they might have little ongoing business here uh, and similar for Irish people to give to foreign charities. Uh, it may not be that easy to find, uh, find a charity which is doing what the Irish person wants. So I leave it at that. That's the, the, those are the tax implications. Uh, you'll see, as Jackie mentioned, that um, there's reference material you can look at on the last slide there. Uh, the Community Foundation is there to help people who want to engage in philanthropy and give money to charity. So you'll see the references there for it. And uh, I'd like to wish everybody good luck with your philanthropic endeavours. Thank you.